Yes, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin. In today's video, I wanna talk about Credit Suisse, their potential collapse, I'll give you an update, as well as how this may affect the crypto market. We'll talk about DeFi protocols, which specific tokens are pumping and why. And on top of all that, we'll start with the market mover Bitcoin. So like always, check the timestamps down below, smash the like button, and let's jump in looking at the data. Bitcoin continues to see its supply moving away from exchanges as traders show further signs of being content with their current holdings. With less than 9% of BTC on exchanges for the first time since 2018, it is a good boat of confidence for the bulls. So less Bitcoin on exchanges, in fact, much less Bitcoin sitting on exchanges than at our peak last year in 2021, price peak. BTC on exchanges falls below 9% for the first time since November 2018. And of course, the reason you have Bitcoin on exchanges is if you plan to sell eventually, but the reason you take Bitcoin off exchanges is if you plan to hold. Bullish. Let's come back to this. Let's keep tabs on this and see how this plays out. But with the macroeconomic environment so unsure right now, it's no wonder that nobody knows quite where we're going short term. If Credit Suisse collapses, will it bring more volatility to the crypto market? Let me catch everybody up to what exactly is happening with Credit Suisse, and then I'll give you an update on where they are today. Credit Suisse, as they describe themselves, is a leading wealth manager with strong investment banking capabilities. So they are one of the main managers of wealth globally, yet as of a few days ago, they were rumored to be on the brink of collapse. And how did this come to our attention? Well, investors started looking at credit default swaps. What are they? Those are effectively bets on whether a debt issuer will survive. I'll play you a clip in a second. This will give you an updated version of what's happening. But just understand that the company's credit default swaps widened to their worst level since 2009. Here is the chart right here. Credit Suisse's credit default swaps spread at 14-year highs where we are today haven't seen these levels actually since 2008, September, that was right before the financial crisis. Is Credit Suisse, as well as Deutsche Bank, sort of in the same situation, are they the next Lehman Brothers? Let's break down this thread, then I'll play you that clip. Well, back in the day, the Lehman Brothers had 600 billion. 600 billion, what Lehman Brothers held in assets when they crashed and took the economy with them as opposed to $2,800 billion, what Credit Suisse and Deutsche Bank control in assets under management, that's 4.6 times more. Credit Suisse is at a critical moment now, says their CEO. So then what does that mean for the crypto market as well as the world? Well, first off, their stocks are tanking. Yes, we're at a bounce today, but the stock of both banks have suffered an absolute rout so far. In the past year alone, their stocks have followed by more than 40%. Deutsche Bank from $12.30 to $7.40. Credit Suisse from $9.83 now to $3.92. So investors are leaving in droves. And to be fair, in the past year, many, many, many companies' bank stocks are down. We're in a down market. But the information we got in these last few days changed everything. The most recent interest arose due to a story from ABC Australia, which reported ominously that a major international investment bank is on the brink of collapse. Although the reports didn't specify any names, the rumor is that they are referring to Credit Suisse. And why was that the rumor? Well, we all then took a look at their CDS's credit default swaps. Credit Suisse's CDS costs have hit the highest level since 2008. A CDS is essentially an insurance purchased against a potential default. And the metrics right now speak for themselves, very similar to what they were before the last collapse. Yet the unfortunate thing about something like this is, even without any underlying issue, such a rumor can quickly become self-fulfilling prophecy as panicking clients start withdrawing their money. Unfortunately, their CEO's recent statements haven't calmed investors' nerves. The bank then said Monday that it was still pressing ahead with its review that includes potential divestitures and asset sales. So Credit Suisse is pressing ahead and will be 
divesting, selling some of their assets. Now, obviously, Deutsche Bank is slightly different. At the moment, not much is known about the reason behind Deutsche Bank's underperformance. Currently, they're trading at approximately 0.3 times book value, and concerns had been raised earlier about their exposure to the derivatives market. But in summation, what this means to you and me, both Credit Suisse and Deutsche Bank are the biggest banks in Switzerland and Germany, respectively, and have a history of more than 150 years. They are also considered to be G-SIBs, meaning global, systematically important banks, making a bailout likely in case of any serious issues. Eerily similar to the collapse of 08. And just to give you the full picture, we did get another update from Credit Suisse today. I'll play this 90-second clip. Watch this. Also here, let's track shares of Credit Suisse here as we're giving you kind of a world view of some of the different movements that we're seeing today. Credit Suisse, that's trading higher today by about 3.5%. This morning, after shares briefly sank to an all-time low on Monday, while credit default swaps hit a record high, Credit Suisse executives have been calling clients and investors to reassure them that it is in sound shape and said it is moving to sell assets as part of its new business plan here, a new business plan that of course needs to just reassure many of its potential clients that it would have worked with that it is still in a good cash position or a li liquid position or has enough uh, in its own reserves because of the fact that there is typically a hit on sentiment when you do hear of a bank making a move like this. Yeah, I like this new research out by uh, J.P. Morgan's credit team this morning. They're saying that they would like to see uh, Credit Suisse pull forward their earnings release. Uh, mm. it's, they're supposed to report on October 27th. They would like to see, and this is coming from their credit team uh, that are really plugged into probably what you're seeing in the credit default swaps markets. But nonetheless, uh, they want to see that pull forward and get a clear action plan on that investment banking division. What happens to it? How is it restructured? Do they need to create, and this is a term I'm sure you remember too, Julie, from the financial crisis, do they need to create a bad bank uh, where they take all the bad assets, kind of like what Citigroup did, and, and hope and just siphon it off and stick it out there in the ethosphere somewhere and then just focus on some of their strong assets. But again, that's the first time I've heard that uh, brought up, really, probably since the financial crisis, a bad bank. All right. Give me your thoughts on this down below. Obviously, a collapse of anything to this size affects us all in crypto, in markets, in life. An ongoing story. I'll keep you updated. On the bright side, if I may say, there's, if there is any bright side in all this, a potential future of decentralized finance is looking brighter and brighter. DeFi tokens in Chainlink, Lido Finance, and MakerDAO jump 7%. And why not? I would rather trust a decentralized protocol versus these major centralized banks that have failed us over and over. The DeFi market is warming up as winter sets in. So first off, why is Chainlink pumping? up nearly 8% in the past 24 hours. Well, we know they had a major integration partnership with Coinbase Cloud, the San Francisco-based crypto exchanges API and data service, now using Chainlink oracles to provide the most accurate, the most decentralized information from off-chain to on, as well as Chainlink has their new staking service to be launched in December. We've talked about this. We've informed you about this. That's why Chainlink is pumping. Why is Lido Finance pumping? Well, Lido Finance, the highly popular liquid staking protocol, is also enjoying a bullish uptick. Now, there has been fewer technical updates for the staking project, but following the Ethereum merge last month, some of Lido's fundamentals have improved. For instance, staked Ethereum, STETH, the token that users receive in return for staking ETH on the platform, has moved closer to price parity with Ethereum. So obviously any improvement like this, however small, does provide more confidence in the underlying project. So that's Lido, but why is Maker token pumping? Maker token is also in the green today, rising more than 8%. And we know Maker is the unofficial central bank for DeFi. Its decentralized stablecoin DAI is the third largest dollar pegged asset in the crypto market after Circles USDC and Tether's USDT, meaning that there is a lot of trust in this protocol and the recent rise in Maker's price comes amid several new proposals for the protocol. Recently, the Winklevi-led crypto exchange Gemini proposed depositing its native GUSD stablecoin with MakerDAO to generate a yield of 1.25%, 
as well as Coinbase, made a similar move earlier in September, offering the DeFi platform 1.5% on its USDC holdings. So as the centralized players like Credit Suisse collapse, the decentralized players are shining more and more as the confidence grows. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. I'll be reading, I'll be commenting, but like always, see you tomorrow.